Greetings! Thank you for lending an ear to The Voice of the Times for Thursday, August 5, 2021. For today's editorial, CDA activities expand under new leadership. The Cooperative Development Authority should be one of the most important agencies of the government, given its mandate to promote the viability and growth of cooperatives as instruments of equity, justice, and economic development, according to Republic Act 6939, by which it was created in 1990. With so much of the Philippine population involved in micro and small enterprises or otherwise earning comparatively modest livelihoods, cooperatives are an effective means of marshalling and getting the most out of community resources for the benefit of all. This is obviously more critical now more than ever as the country struggles to overcome the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the past, however, the CDA has occasionally frustrated its would-be beneficiaries. While it has objectively provided a good deal of guidance and assistance to many cooperatives around the country, the view of many others has not always been favorable, perceiving it to be slow and mired in red tape. That appears to be changing quite rapidly under the CDA's recently promoted chairman, Undersecretary Joseph Joy Encabo, who is just about a week beyond his first 100 days on the job. Under Undersecretary Encabo, the CDA has been a veritable whirlwind of activity and has made remarkable improvements in both its responsiveness to cooperatives' needs as they struggle along with the rest of us to weather the pandemic, and in facilitating the growth of cooperatives as one ingredient in the economic recovery. One of Encabo's first and most useful initiatives, the Biaheng Ko'o program, was a series of field visits to micro, small, and medium cooperatives across the country in order to identify their actual needs and develop practical, relevant responses to them. This was a departure from the usual support agency work trying to produce one-size-fits-all solutions, well-meaning though these may be. And Cabo's hands-on approach not only undoubtedly helped him become extensively familiar with his agency's clientele, but it greatly improved communication between the CDA and the cooperatives it serves. Extending the connection between the CDA and cooperatives beyond in-person visits, the agency has also established a new hotline for cooperatives' questions and concerns. Along with this, it is working on plans to provide internet connectivity for micro and small cooperatives. In line with this, Encabo issued a number of orders intended to streamline the CDA services amid the pandemic, including extending the validity of certificates of compliance issued in 2020, facilitating cooperatives' utilization of their community development funds for social services, and lifting a moratorium that had imposed on the registration of federations of cooperatives and cooperative unions. The CDA has lately reported that 16 other issuances intended to help cooperative members and their communities during the pandemic are being prepared for review and public consultation. In addition, the CDA is conducting an internal review of processes with an eye toward reducing cooperatives' registration and reporting requirements in line with the Ease of Doing Business Act. In Encabo's brief couple of months at the helm, the CDA has also formed partnerships with other key government agencies to help boost cooperatives' technical capacities and market opportunities. These include the Philippine Center for Post-Harvest Development and Mechanization for Beneficiaries of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund Mechanization Program, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources for Capacity Building and Market Access for Fisherful Cooperatives, and the Development Bank of the Philippines to help provide expanded financial and operational management training to cooperatives. We often focus on the shortcomings and unhelpful actions, or lack of action, of government agencies, and we make no apologies for that because it is necessary for the public good. It is just as important, however, to highlight when an agency or government department is making an extra effort to fulfill its mandate. The CDA is a vital lifeline for a large number of Filipinos who have felt the impact of the pandemic here more than the rest of us. It is encouraging that the CDA and its chief recognize that and are doing what they can to address it. And that's the editorial for Thursday, August 5, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.